Hello, my name is Mikhail Rogers and I'm the composer of Autumn Fanfare and I wanted to welcome you to my band room and uh, talk a little bit about the piece and hopefully give you some performance suggestions uh, as you get ready to perform this work. Uh, Autumn Fanfare is uh, a great little piece for um, younger groups. I composed it to sound more difficult than it actually is. It makes a, a young band sound really, really big and full. And I wanted to talk to you a couple of things about the piece. The piece is basically in three short sections, and it's got a really nice melody at the heart of it, and then in the middle there's a more lyrical melody, and then it gets back to the uh, kind of fanfare uh, melody towards the end. And we'll talk real quick about some of the uh, uh, things that you can do to make the performance really exciting. It's Mark Tempo 132. Uh, 132 is a pretty quick tempo, an allegro tempo. And I, you can take it a little slower if you like, but uh, it really works good at this tempo. So it's designed to go pretty quick. Um, you'll notice that there are two percussion parts. Um, for There's a regular percussion snare drum bass drum part, and then there's an advanced percussion snare drum bass drum part. And either one works really, really well. I uh, just wanted to give the variety uh, in case you have different ability levels in your percussion section. I know I certainly do. So uh, it's, it's nice to have uh, the option. But both of them work really, really well. And the uh, couple of other things, at the very beginning, the trill, which is in the, uh, the first couple of measures in the flutes and clarinets. Um, flutes, you obviously want to trill from the B flat, which is written, to the note above that, which is a C. Okay, so you'll finger the B flat and then use the trill key. Um, clarinets, you're going to trill from a G, open G, nothing down, to an A using your A key. Okay. Um, make sure that that trill is nice and big at the beginning, but you also want to make sure that it's not so big that it covers up the trumpets in measure two, okay? Because the trill is the most important thing for measure one, but measure two, the trumpets need to be heard. So if you need to back off the volume on the trill at the second measure when the trumpets come in so they can be heard, then go ahead and do it. That's totally fine. Also, you want to make sure that that trill only lasts for three measures, okay? Woodwinds love to play trills. That's one reason why I put, uh, put them in. And uh, you want to make sure that you don't lose your place, okay? So that you have a whole note tied to a whole note tied to a whole note, all trilling. And then you release the trill on the downbeat of measure four. That way it's a nice clean release, okay? And when you end the trill, you always do... Uh, you always end with the note that's written as opposed to the note that you're trilling to. So you'll, you'll stop on a B flat flutes or on a G clarinets, okay? So that's a little bit about how to handle the first couple of bars there. Also the trill at the end of the piece for the woodwind, same thing. You'll notice that in the third measure, by the way, I keep looking down because I've got a copy of the score here just so that I can reference it, but there you go. Um, in measure three, and four and five, you have this buildup with different sections coming in with the ba 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 So you want to make sure that you actually start that fairly soft. It's marked mezzo forte, but you can go even softer if you've got the people uh, to do it. And the idea is to make dynamic contrast so that it builds up to that big whole note that's in the full band in measure six. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, in measure seven, B, ba, 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 make sure that the flutes uh, get that A natural in measure seven because that's an easy one to miss. Okay, and you want to tune those chords um, throughout the whole band. D, bum, bum, bum. You know, tune those chords so that you can hear the resonance, even though it's going by pretty quick. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. All of that should be forte right there, okay? Because the whole note and the, the D, da, 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 in measure seven needs to be forte. Then you drop to a mezzo forte, which is not a big drop, but it does go down a little. So don't keep playing forte when you get to measure eight, okay? Uh, and that's where your main melody is. Now, where's the main melody? It's in this case, in the flute, oboe, and trumpet. Bum, 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 bum. Now, if it's a fanfare, students, you gotta make sure you play the eighth notes very short, okay? Don't go dee da da da, okay? Bum 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 bum, very nice and short, uh, clean eighth notes, give it that really nice feel. 
of a fanfare, okay? Um, when you get to measure 15, okay, this is another note that is really important. There's, there's a couple of people that have uh, a half note that slurs to another half note, okay? Which is um, in the clarinet, uh, clarinet two, second clarinet, you've got a C uh, slurring to a half note B natural, and that's really important that you get the B natural in there with the second finger on the right hand because uh, it's easy to miss, okay? So if uh, you've got pencils, that would be one to mark, right? Um, saxophones, you're doing the same thing from a G to an F sharp, and the uh, French horns are doing the same thing from an F to an E, so that's something that's pretty important there. Um, then after that at 16 with the pickup notes, notice that the melody now goes to the bass instruments, okay? It's the same melody, but for a couple of bars, it's taken by the bass instruments. Boom, 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 and that uh, needs to come out. Now, lower pitches are not going to sound as big as higher pitches just because of physics, right? So what you want to do is realize that the low brass and the low winds have the melody and then all the other players like the flute, oboe, clarinet, alto sax, trumpet, French horn that's doing the ba ba ba, ba ba ba, that stuff right there, make sure it stays underneath the melody that's in the low brass. That's very important because you don't want to have da, 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 you know, overshadowing all of that nice work that the low brass is going to be doing for you. Okay? And the low brass like to get the melody sometimes, so we like to give it to them sometimes. Um, and then four bars later, when it goes back into the upper instruments, then you can you know, bring those back out. Okay? Uh, skipping over to measure 23, you'll notice that there's a crescendo to forte there. I would almost say whenever you have that kind of a crescendo, it's from a mezzo forte to a forte, you might even want to bring it down a little further because uh, like down to a piano or a mezzo piano going up to a forte. And the reason is because it gives you more contrast and it's very, very effective in the performance. You also want to not breathe in between measure 23 and 24. Okay, because you've got a crescendo there. Now the crescendo's going somewhere. It's not going to the end of measure 23. It's going to the downbeat of measure 24. So you want to make sure you don't cheat the crescendo by taking a big breath there. Because a lot of students, they see a long note marked forte and they'll take a big breath, all right? But you don't want to do that there. You need to stagger breathe, which means breathe at a time different than your neighbor. Okay? And what that'll do is it'll make the really nice crescendo happen without this big gap right before that whole note. Okay? Practice that and you'll really like the effect. Okay? Uh, then we have the, everybody just about in the band has the whole note tied to the half note and then a half rest, okay? except for the clarinets. And what you want to do is make sure that that cutoff is all together on beat three. Okay, so 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash 1 dash 2 dash off, off on 3, and that will help uh, with the, the clarity of the release. Okay, and then the timpani right there, you've got that nice two measure boom, 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 that's big. Okay, go ahead and bring that out. When you get to 26, you got the second melody. Okay, which is a really smooth melody, um, more lyrical, not as fanfare-ish here, okay, it's more pretty, all right, and so we've got to have, -da 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 -da, okay, and um, the echo that happens in the trumpet and also the flute and oboe, that ba ba ba, okay, ba 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 ba, you might want to consider limiting the number of people that play that. It's marked mezzo piano, but if you've got a large trumpet section or a large flute section, and they're all going, ba, ba, ba. even if they're all trying to do it soft, it's still going to come out loud. So you might want to cut it to just a couple of people. A lot of times when I do this in performance, I'll cut it to maybe four flutes and one or two trumpets. And you still get the effect, you, you still get the notes, but um, it's more off in the distance and more echoey. And it makes it sound really pretty and it won't cover up the clarinets. Okay. Um, and then when, a couple bars later, when everybody else comes in, it's just nice and pretty for a couple more bars. You'll notice that in measure 33, we have that build up again. Bum, ba, 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 like we had at the 
uh, beginning, right? So that, that you want to treat that the same way. Start that kind of soft and build it up as each different section comes in, okay? And then the peak is that whole note. And then the D, bum, 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 right? Notice, though, also in measure 36, bum, 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 some people change notes. And some people stay on the same note. Some go ba, 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 ba. Some go bum, 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 bum. You know, or whatever. You know, some people stay on the same pitch and other people change pitches. What's more important to hear is the people that change the pitch because that makes it interesting, okay? So if you're changing a pitch, play just slightly louder than the people that are staying on the same pitch, okay? And it'll make the chord change sound really nice, all right? Then when you get to 37, notice this is the same melody that's way back here at measure uh, eight. The difference is, there's two differences. One, it's now forte instead of mezzo forte, okay? The second thing is there's something called a counter melody or an extra little part that's going on in the flute and oboe. Okay, they've got this rest, bum bum bum, rest, bum 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 bum, rest, bum 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 bum, bum 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 bum. Okay, that's new. It's based on other parts of the piece, but that's a new little melody thing that is layered on top of the main one. So we want to make sure, since that's the new thing in the piece, that we do hear it. Now, it shouldn't overbear the main melody. Uh, it shouldn't overpower the main melody that's in the trumpet. But uh, you do want to have people notice, oh, that's different, okay? So you want to play it slightly differently um, in, the, in, in that it's forte and also that you're adding that little extra thing in the flute, okay? When you get to measure 45, uh, here's another situation where you've got a crescendo that you'd want to start soft, okay, and then build it back up, okay? Because... And it's a build up over two measures of a crescendo. So you can start it really soft and then build, 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 build. So that you build up to that nice big double forte, okay, fortissimo, two Fs, okay. That doesn't mean ugly, right? It just means a little bit stronger than forte, okay. Nice and strong. And then you got that trill again right there. Big entrance in the trumpets in 48. Might want to bring down the trill at 48 for the same reason that we did at the beginning of the piece. And then big chord at the end, bum, bum, ding, 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 boom, 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 right, with the timpani, big, big sound there, big percussion sound, uh, and notice on the last note, you've got that rooftop accent, it either goes this way or goes this way, depending on which way your notes go, and that's basically a short one of the regular accent, so you want to basically hit it and get off of the note quickly, but also have it resonate, don't go, uh, you know, you don't want it to sound like a, uh, a grunt. You want it to sound like an actual tone, but you want it to be nice and short as well. So, boom, right, okay? Uh, and also at the very bottom of my score, well, it's, <laughs> it's at the bottom of my score, but it, it's in the crash cymbal part. Uh, on that very last note, you've got a dot right there to choke the cymbal which basically means you're going to hit the cymbals and immediately put it up against your stomach so that it doesn't ring after the cutoff. That, w that way you don't get bum, bum, you know, from the cymbal, right? So you want it to uh, choke the sound so that it doesn't overplay into, or go over into the rest, okay? And hopefully that'll give you some good tips on how to do the piece. There are some recordings available online. Uh, on the Pepper website, on the FJH website, and also my personal website, mikhailrogers.com. And they're, they're, the recordings are full band recordings, and they're free uh, to listen to and, you know, and uh, get some ideas on how, um, on how to get the feel of the piece. So uh, I look forward to uh, hearing some feedback from you guys, and I uh, love to hear the performance. Every now and then I'll find a recording of this on YouTube of a band performing, and it's always neat to see that or whatever. So feel free to email me, students, if you uh, record this or uh, record your performance or uh, have something you just want to ask, you know, feel free to email me. Um, you can reach me through an email on the website, uh, www.mikhailrogers.com and uh, I'll put it at the end of this video, okay? So thank you very much. This has been Mikhail Rogers, and have a good performance.